This is a super exciting video. In front of me, I have the Blackmagic Pixie 6K that I got from Blackmagic on loan. This is not a sponsored video. This is just my honest review on the Pixie 6K. I'm gonna build it out and make what I think will be a good rig for this camera. And yeah, we're gonna go from there. So let's build it out. So I got the full cage from Tilta. What I really like about this is that it comes with a multi-tool. This multi-tool is like nice and small, it's compact. I have more multi-tools, but this one, I just like the stiffness of it. I like how small and compact it is. And it has every tool that you need to build this camera. So we'll start with the top plate. There were no instructions in the box. That was a little bit interesting for me. Um, I am like a read all the instructions, understand everything before you start kind of guy. So it did throw me off a little bit that there was absolutely nothing. Thankfully, it's it seems pretty simple. So we're just gonna put it together. It takes some quarter 20 in these like four pockets right here. It's nice and flush and gives you so many points to mount. I'll show you guys since I don't have an overhead camera. There's the top plate with the screws. Next, let's do this other plate. It's the bottom plate. It leaves room for the fans to breathe and then gives you a bunch of mounting points in the bottom so you can do all sorts of, you know, plates, whatever you need, dovetail, Manfrotto, quick release plates, whatever you need, you can attach to all of these spots here. I do already have the side plate on. This is really cool. It has like this nice little button here that you can put SSDs in. I'll actually show you guys real quick, it's really cool. So I have a, as you guys know, Blackmagic is like well known for the ability to shoot on SSDs. This SSD will just slide in here. And if I press the release, it'll let me put it in. And then if I let go, it is like securely in there. Like I can't shake that out, which is really, really cool. I'm not sure about the full compatibility list, but these are Samsung T7s and it's pretty much exclusively all I use to store my files. And then there's still a bunch of mounting points so that you can put all sorts of things, uh, including like side handles and stuff on this holder. Let's turn it over and put this plate on the bottom. It comes with the pre, the screws are already like built in. Um, so all you have to do is just look at that. Clicks right in. Make sure I didn't put it backwards. Over the years, I've used both small rig and Tilta cages for my Blackmagic products. And, and also on other cameras, FX6s, things like that, I've used both. And I've come to find, like I like both, they're both great companies. I found that Tilta makes more snug fitting and like sleek builds with a lot of like hidden features that I love. Like just different things that you can do with the configurations. Um, it feels like they think of everything. So I, I really love Tilta cages, they look cool. Um, and add so much functionality to your camera. That wasn't a that wasn't an ad, <laughs> promise. What's really cool, they also included this Manfrotto base plate that you can just pop right on the bottom of this and it fits nice and snug. There it is, the base plate and bottom plate. Again, all nice and snug, all right. So now we got it oriented the right way. These should be in the front and now these pieces should go in really easily. So I'm gonna put this one on, just so you can see what I'm doing here. And then there's one on the bottom. I'm pretty sure this rosette here is where you would put like a side handle or something like that if you wanted to kind of grip the camera from there. Then we have the other side, which is this one. And same thing. So now we have pretty much the full cage. You got your top plate, your bottom plate, and Manfrotto attachment, and then you have your two side, I don't know what you would call these, just like side grids of the plate um, with even more mounting points. So like all in all, there are a bazillion mounting points on this thing, which is really, really cool. And then obviously love the shape of this camera. So Blackmagic obviously has been known for kind of having irregular shaped cameras like the Ursas are, you know, more broadcast style, large body cameras and kind of boxy, but more rectangular, if anything. And this is the first true box camera that Blackmagic has done. Um, a lot of people were wondering about like the weight and size of this thing. It is still kind of big. It's not like a red Komodo or something where you can really just like pop it around. It's really lightweight, very, very small. 
it's still kind of clunky. It's a little heavy. I, I would say the body itself weighs just a little bit less than my Ursa. What's gonna be nice about this is the balance of it is going to feel way better than shooting on like the 6K cinema camera, which I do own and which is shooting my B angle. That one is a little bit awkward. When, when you put rails and stuff, you block the screen. It's kind of just annoying to use. And this feels like it's gonna be way more balanced. Um, and I'm also excited to try and use this with a gimbal. So let's go ahead and put the handles on. We have a top handle here, which I have used this top handle on most of the FX6s and FX3s with Tilta. And I love it for two reasons. One, uh, I love a natal rail top handle because it's so easy to just slide on, tighten, boom, you're good to go. But two, I love the hot shoe mount because it is downward facing, which means that once you click your item in and you tighten it, the only way that it'll loosen is if you are holding the camera this way. And then we have this side handle here, which is nice. I actually don't use side handles on my rigs, but I'm interested to see how this works with the Pixis. Looks like it slides on from the bottom up like so. I'm gonna see if it works on the other side. I am more of like a left-handed shooter, I guess. Maybe everybody is. Feels nice. Um, feels a little bit far from the body, to be honest, but I'm curious, like when I put a lens on it and stuff, maybe it'll feel better. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna pop on this battery plate. It's also Tilta, but I don't think it's included in the cage kit. I think it's a separate purchase. So click that in there. And then it has a little bit like of a spring-loaded safety like latch. So that's really nice and secure. I will say I wish it was even more flush to the body um, because it does start to kind of like turn the box camera into more of like a rectangular Ursa shaped camera. And what's nice also is that you won't have to run any cable to like start to, to give power to the camera. It is a dummy battery. So as soon as you put a gold nut here, camera's ready to be powered up. And what I love is that it features two more P-taps as well as a two pin and a USB-C and a DC um, out. You can power a lot of accessories just with this. Um, I know when I've used battery plates, I always look for battery plates that have extra outputs because you wanna run, you wanna be able to run all your accessories, your monitor, all those things. Speaking of, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a monitor on here, a battery on here, and just kinda power it up and take a look at it. We got our gold mount, we'll pop that on there. And then we'll put our monitor. It's a small HD five inch. It's, it's like one of the older models, but I swear by this thing, I love it. Got it from my uh, friend Dylan Deaton, incredible DP. Pixis 6K is a SDI only camera for monitoring. And then it has a USB-C. So there is no HDMI port, which kind of is sad because I do have a couple monitors that are HDMI only. Um, so I'll probably be letting go of those, but the SDI is a little bit more of a secure connection, so that's great. And then obviously, I think, I've used it before, but the actual Blackmagic Pixis monitor is amazing. And it's so nice because you literally just run the monitor and one USB-C cable that goes right to the front of here, and it can even lock. And so that's really nice for simplicity. Um, it keeps things like super simple, very flush, and the USB-C connection is nice, because then you have your SDI open for Teradek or whatever monitoring system you're using. And again, this is kind of my gripe with this system is the power is so far away. I wish it was like right here so you could just be flush. And there you have it. This is the Pixis 6K rigged out. Um, I'll put a lens on here. This is the full rig. Blackmagic Pixis 6K. Um, I am gonna test this out with some other lenses and get some just like nature shots and just whatever I can find, uh, just some frames over the holiday season. And I'll put that in here so you guys can see kind of what the footage looks like. I've used this camera a few times. Um, I'll include some of that test footage too. I'm gonna say some positives and some negatives. So 
The pros of this camera is the modularity, the ability to kind of rig it out however you want it to. It resembles other box style cameras like Reds, which you know were originally intended to be like crash cameras. You can kind of rig them up however you need, put it on a car, put it in the air, do an overhead rig, and you can kind of, it has all these mounting points and it's small, it's compact, it's box. This is that, which is really cool. Obviously the sensor is a huge pro. Blackmagic has incredible color science and I always recommend I always recommend people, if you want to start off with a camera, you can go and get the Sony or the RED or whatever, the Canon, you can do it. And I, I'll always say, get the camera that makes you feel the most confident. However, I truly believe that bang for your buck, Blackmagic is by far the best. And the color science that you get out of this, if you learn how to color grade properly, you can get such beautiful colors such great dynamic range out of this. It's a beautiful camera with beautiful image. The cons that I would say is the weight. I think it would have been nice if it was a little lighter, um, then it would feel like a really, really big win. Two, I do wish there was an extra SDI out port similar to the Ursa lines so that I could run a traditional monitor, not the Pixis monitor, and I would still have an out, another SDI out port to be able to send to my monitoring, my, my wireless monitoring systems there was one more oh duh everybody's gripe there are no built-in nd filters which it's not like the biggest deal ever it's not like a deal breaker because you don't necessarily need to have internal nd filters right now i have an nd filter a variable nd on the front of this lens um, i also have the tilt of matte boxes but i really do hope that they come out with the pixis pro or something that has internal nds because the convenience of being able to keep your camera super slim and not run a matte box or a variable nd on the front of your lens and still have that power to keep your eye to keep your iris down it's incredible one last one and this is super nitpicky of me and it's not even that big of an issue but this screen i've been using blackmagic for a long time since 2020 i think and i've noticed that this screen feels like the quality is a little bit lower it feels like they didn't go as hard with making this screen like super high quality it just feels a little bit less intentional like it feels a little cheaper and i think part of the reasoning for that is because you they want you to use the black magic monitor which i've used and it is nice it has full like control of the camera which is great so you wouldn't even need to necessarily access this. And I think this is becoming more of like a secondary, like you just need to access menus on this. It's not really the monitor that you use to watch the footage. Whereas their older cameras, that monitor was like the selling point was the fact that they had a huge, basically a, a five to six inch monitor on the back of the camera and you don't need to put a monitor on top. I think with this one, they know you're gonna put a monitor on top because it's a fixed screen on the left side just really for controls. This is your true onboard monitoring monitor. So it's not a huge issue. I just noticed it a little bit. I noticed some like flickering and things and like some of the touch points don't feel like as responsive as the other, um, as the other screens are, but it's still bright. It still gets your image across. I would just make sure you put a nice trusted monitor that can give you accurate colors and just accurate contrast and all that stuff. That's it, y'all. I think that's the whole video. I, I'm not gonna keep it going too much longer. And let me know what you think of the Pixis 6K. If you have it, let me know how it's been working for you, what's your setup, what would you recommend uh, accessory-wise for people to get if it's not this. Yeah, tell me your pros and your cons. And if you haven't checked out the Pixis 6K, you should definitely check it out. Go get it from like Lens Rentals or something, test it out for a day or two, and see what you think. You might be pleasantly surprised. All right, y'all, catch you on the next one. Peace.